Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taren, and this is the Black White Rotation Proof Knights for Corset 2019 Standard, or rather, I guess, Guilds of Ravnica Standard. So as the intro states, this is a completely rotation proof list, which means that we're not going to be using any cards from Amonkhet block, we're not going to use any cards from the Kaladesh block, only cards from Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, uh, Dominaria, and Corsa 2019. And uh, since the Guilds of Ravnica hasn't come out yet, those are the four sets we're working with. Basically, these deck techs are to help you kind of build a deck that is rotation proof once you get into October, uh, so that you have a strong deck for now and for the future, and you don't, you don't have to really worry about any kind of uh, losing cards or anything like that uh, moving forward. So this is Black White Knights. Let's jump into the deck list here. Starting with our creatures, we have 22 in total. Dauntless Bodyguard, Knight of Grace, Knight of Malice, and Benalish Marshal. Um, so the knights in this list are, uh, you know, pretty decent, actually. Lots of great uh, two and three drops and uh, good four drops as well. Dauntless Bodyguard being a great way to protect our Knight of Grace Malice or Banalish Marshal from any kind of uh, destroy target creature or any kind of combat step. A one mana 2 1. When it enters a battlefield, choose target creature you control. Sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard. The chosen creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Uh, if you're up against a slower deck, deck matchup, Dauntless Bodyguard is a great turn one play. Um, but if you're not and you're playing up against a more like. Um, like control or aggro based matchup and you really need to uh, kind of deal with a lot of removal or something like that uh, Dauntless Bodyguard is probably a turn 2 play or turn 3 play uh, after Knight of Grace, Malice and Benelish Marshall hitting the battlefield. Knight of Grace and Malice of course they are hexproof from white and black uh, respectively and they get plus 1 plus 0 as long as we control a black permanent or a white permanent respectively so super good there they pump each other up and they have first strike as well so they can definitely trade with a uh, Goblin Chain Whirler pretty easily and Benelish Marshall here is a great card for us other creatures get plus 1 plus one for three mana a three three as well um three white mana here is a little bit difficult for us but thanks to our land base we're actually not too far off uh, from hitting this on turn three pretty much every single time moving up here to the other creatures we have we have um ariel i think it's type Ar ariel 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 or ariel i don't really know how to pronounce that knight of wing grace the valiant knight and lena selfless champion all three are great for us two from course at 2019 and one from dominarium uh, knight of wing grace here's a four mana four four with vigilance that alone is pretty good but we can pay three and create a 2-2 knight creature token vigilance. We can also pay one tap X, untap knights we control, and destroy target creature with power X or less. That's really interesting in the mid to late game against a slower matchup um, or a more grindy matchup where the board state's really gummed up. The problem here is that you have to tap untap knights on your side of the field, and that can be... Uh, kind of difficult especially if you're kind of in the mid to late game where you only have maybe three to four and you can't really kill whatever the large thing is on their side of the field something though that is really good for us is valiant knight a four mana three four other knights you control get plus and plus one so basically another banish marshal and we can pay five and knights you control gain double strike into end of turn effectively being a win con here uh in the mid to late game maybe even the early game if we get this on turn five into a turn uh or turn four into a turn five uh, activation here and lena selfless champion is here for all those board wipes we do not like a six mana three 3 3. When it enters a battlefield, create 1 1 white soldier tokens for each non creature or non token creature you control. You can also sacrifice uh, Lena, selfless champion, and creatures you control with power less than Lena's power, gain indestructible until end of turn. Effectively being everything except for a Knight of Wind Grace in our deck list, unless they're pumped up, of course, with, with Banalish Marshal and Valiant Knight um, and Radiant Destiny, which is also in the deck list as well. So I like this being a one of in the mid to late games where there's a lot of removal or a lot of board sweep stuff. Sweltering Suns, especially right now, Iron Devastation. Um, most once we get into rotation, we have stuff like uh, Cleansing Nova, that kind of stuff. Um, we probably will get another Sweeper uh, in the Ravnica block as well. Uh, but Selfless Champion is a very good card regardless. But that is all the creatures here. Let's move on to our spells. We have Pride of the Conquerors and Vraska's Contempt, a four mana uh, instant removal spell, basically. Exile target creature, Planeswalker, you gain two life. This is here for our control matchup against a Teferi, a Karn. Um, anything we do not like on their side of the field, we're going to get rid of it as well. And right now, it's very good against Scarab God, stuff like that uh, in the matchups. When since uh, I'm gonna get all that kind of stuff is still in uh, standard. And Pride of the Conquerors is a great way to end the match actually kind of way more quickly than you realize. A two mana instant with Ascend. Uh, that's of course if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. And creatures you control get plus one plus one into end of turn. But if you have the city's blessing, this is plus two plus two into end of turn, and it's an instant speed uh, for your entire board. This card is insane, very powerful, and can end the game out of nowhere if your opponent is not expecting it. But that's all the spells we have, only five in total. Let's move on to our enchantments here. We've got three. 
three, History of Vidalia, Iridium Destiny, and Ixalan's Binding. Um, so we don't really have any flash speed removal as far as uh, non-permanent removal uh, like cast out right now in the rotation proof lists. Uh, maybe we'll get something like that in the future. Uh, but I really love Ixalan's Binding right here, especially being sorcery speed removal because it can remove future plays like a Glorybringer and then a follow-up Glorybringer cannot be played right now, especially in uh, before rotation happens. A four mana enchantment. When Ixalan's Binding enters the battlefield, an exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Ixalan's Binding leaves the battlefield and your opponent can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. So super good. And again, if our opponent taps out for like a Teferi and doesn't have a negate open for them, uh, then Ixalan's Binding is going to grab that Teferi and they're just going to be out of luck playing Teferis the rest of the game. Super good. Um, Radiant Destiny here is for us to uh, pump our board state once again, a three mana enchantment with Ascend. As Radiant Destiny enters a battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus and plus one. And if we have the city's blessing, they also have vigilance. So really, really good as well. And a great turn three play for us is actually History of Analia, basically another creature producer for us. A three mana enchantment saga. Chapter one and two create two, um, two, two white creature knights or knight creatures tokens with vigilance. And chapter three years knights you control get plus one plus zero into in return. So a turn five or turn six History of Analia activation on the chapter three there. Um, normally ends a match unless the opponent either bounces History of Analia, deals with it, or deals with our board state. So really creates a really fast clock against our opponent uh, for our creature based strategy. But that's all the enchantments. Let's move on to lands here. The last thing in the deck list here. We've got 23 lands in total, eight plains, seven swamp, four unclaimed territory. Since again, we are building this rotation proof, so we don't have another white black land for us. Unclaimed territory, we just named knights and can tap for white or black, which is nice for us. And isolated chapel here. Uh, we can tap for white or black from that. As long as we control a swamp or plains, it comes in untapped as well, which is also pretty nice. Um, really like unclaimed territory here, especially for uh, Banalish Marshall. Uh, but the real downside here, since uh, we don't have another dual land for for white black is that um you know history banalia can almost not be a turn three play thanks to this situation that's why there's one more planes than swamp in the deck list uh, but it's basically split pretty even across the deck list but that is it for the game one game plan let's move on to our uh actual sideboard here and see what we can do in game two uh starting with duress sentinel totem seal away and invoke the divine basically dealing with control um rec recursion in the graveyard zombies basically uh seal away for more aggro and then uh invoke the divine for artifacts or enchantment hate stuff like that uh, lots of good stuff here in the sideboard for kind of control tempo hate and seal away is really here in the sideboard over ixalan's binding i put ixalan's binding in, in the main board instead of seal away because there are quite a few creatures that have vigilance right now especially knights themselves against the mirror match seal away is a terrible card uh, we want to have this in the sideboard and bring in against a matchup where we know they're not gonna have a lot of like you know vigilance creatures but let's move on to the rest of the sideboard here we've got a plague mare sigiled sword of valera i think is how you pronounce it and settle the wreckage plague mare is basically our goblin chain whirler in black a three mana two two can be blocked by white creatures and when it enters the battlefield creatures your opponents control get negative one negative one into end of turn basically being a really really good black sweeper for us if they're on a token based strategy or we really need to get in for like game ending damage and we want to weaken their board state against like a mono green snoppy, something like that. Sigil Sword of Valerian, if our opponent is not on a very heavy removal strategy, board this in, and this is a token producer forever, a great card for three mana. Equipped for three is kind of expensive, but again, it kind of pays for itself, and then it creates a 2-2 two -two once you attack with the uh, creature that this is equipped to. And settle the wreckage if we are, if our opponent is up against, or if our opponent is playing a uh, heavy aggro strategy, settle the wreckage is here to shut down that kind of strategy and reward us, uh, you know, with a turn four, settle the wreckage, they exile everything, and and then we just swing in for the win on turn five. But that's the full 75, folks. Let's go to the actual deck list here layout. And uh, if you want to build this on MTGO Traders, it's coming to about 68 tickets, which is not bad at all. And if you want to build this in paper, it's coming to about 160 bucks. Uh, the most expensive cards being, of course, Vras' Contempt, History of Banalia. And that is basically it. Uh, Settle the Wreckage is a couple bucks as well in the sideboard. Uh, but besides that, you know, everything else in here is pretty affordable. So I feel like Vras' Contempt will likely come down a little bit if we get another uh, kind of Exile target Planeswalker or Creature card in Ravnica. I feel like that needs to be coming pretty soon. Um, so that's probably going to be something that's going to be coming down in price. I don't know about History of Benalia, though. That's kind of a card that's uh, really meant to be in a deck like this or a more uh, kind of a controlless deck. Uh, just a really good card that can go off on, on its own. So I think that's probably a card that's going to stay up in price for a while. Um, but overall, really love this deck list and I hope you guys like it too. But that's it for the deck tech. Let's get into some matches, guys, and see what we can do with this deck list. All right, guys, let's get into the matches. By the way, I'm doing some illustrated stuff uh, for the thumbnails and the matches there. Hope you like them. Uh, opening hand here is not bad. We go with a three land keep. Always a good hand to see. Didn't have a second uh, second mana drop or two mana drop. There we go. Uh, but found Nine of Grace. Opponent is on this weird elf strategy, I think. And uh, going for Nine of Grace on turn two passing. Thorn Lieutenant is a two mana two three, which is actually quite good. 
A Knight of Grace can't block that unless it would want to die. A three mana tap here. Going for Ronas the Indomitable. Go for a third mana. Go for a Radiant Destiny here. Name Knight. Make a 3 3. And uh, wanted to crash in there, but uh, fearing the Ronas being able to be turned on with the Thorn Lieutenant there and crashing in for 10, that would suck so much. Um, so we're going to kind of hold off here for just a bit. And uh, opponent playing their fourth land here, Blooming Marsh. So we don't want to get into a um, Thrasus Contempt situation. We do have one in our hand, so we do hit a la another land. We could go for that. So they turn on the, Ro the Ronas there with Lord Thorn Lieutenant, and they attack in for five. We let that happen, and we go with a scoop there because we can't really see any kind of situation out of that. Um, so we go with a uh, pass here, bring in Seal Away, take out the Knight of Wind Grace, and just go with a Submit here, because we really like the Seal Away for that situation. Um, a little bit too slow for us in that game one there, but it's all right, we'll be able to make it up in game two. No big deal. Um, so let's see what we can do in game two. By the way, guys, if you already didn't know, uh, I think I may have told this in this actual video here, um, but uh, yeah, streaming on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Check it out. Would really appreciate it. Um, usually Fridays we do Fan Fridays. Uh, let's see here. Three lands, opening hand once again. History Benalia on turn three. Dauntless Bodyguard, since we have that, we're going to be aggressive here. And Ixalan's Binding with Valiant Knight. So very, very nice. Land into Rampager, and they bounce that, getting an energy. We're going to go with a Knight of Grace off the top there and get in for two. So really do like that we played the Dauntless Bodyguard by itself to get in for some damage there. Rampager coming in here is a 3-4. We uh, play this and then go for a History of Benalia and then just uh, pass the turn here. Can't get around that Rampager just yet. Um, but that's all right. We have a Valiant Knight in our hand. If we hit another fourth land, uh, we'll be golden. So three lands from opponent going for a Steel Leaf Champion here. Um, Knight of Grace for us. We make a 2-2 two -two here and then uh, just pass turn. With a 3-2, a 3-2 First Striker. So if they do attack out with a Steel Leaf Champion, we can double block. They go with a Pass here after playing two Llanowar Elves. We get the Pump there. And then we have Valiant Knight again with another Pump. And uh, we just swing out like a madman because that, that trades for everything on their entire board. They go for two blocks on the Knights here. And uh, a block with the Rampager on one. And then another block with the Steel Leaf Champion. We cleared their entire board down to 12. We have such a huge board state right now just on turn five. Um, still leave champion for a pro opponent. We go Ixalan's Binding, kind of thinking about a uh, Blossoming Defense there. We do get it out of the opponent and pass turn. Um, so all we need to do now is basically hit a one mana to make Valiant Knight have double strike across the board. And we do. We hit Knights there. We can play another Valiant Knight here or go double strike. We decide to go Valiant Knight. That way these uh, first strikers can race against the Still leave Champions. Uh, dropping them down to one if they do not block. They block one uh, and uh, go with a Blossoming Defense to pump that. They take them down to, or we take them down to five and pass turn here. Two cards in the opponent's hand here. They go for a Vine Mare. So another good card as well. We're just going to go with the pump here. Make everything have double strike. We uh, actually went out of that. So very, very nice. Um, so bringing in Settle the Wreckage, taking out Lena there. And um, probably taking out a uh, Pride of the Conquerors as well. And bringing in, let's see here, probably a Duress or Plague Mare because of those Llanowar Elves. Yeah, bringing in Plague Mare for Llanowar Elves and Sorting. And let's get into game three here. Um, so Steel Leaf Champion, really, really difficult card to get around, but because of all the pump we have with Banalish Marshall, History Banalia, um, but not History, yeah, History Banalia and um, Banalish Marshall, as well as the Valiant Knight, we have tons of pump uh, for our entire board state. So let's get into game three here and see what we can do. Hoping to have a decent opening hand. Would really love that, honestly. Um, having four, five lands, going with four mulligan here. Knight of Grace on top, that's a good keep for us. Um, Let our elves off the top for our opponent. We go with a pass here. So we had too many lands in our opening hand there. Um, Ronas again, so really, really kind of dangerous here. Gonna go for Knight of Grace and then uh, hold up either Radiant Destiny, Radiant Destiny, or History of Benalia. Since we have Settle the Wreckage here, we just need to hit another land to make sure we have a turn for uh, Settle the Wreckage for that Ronas. Uh, playing History of Benalia for blockers here and passing turn. Could have attacked in there with Knight of Grace. Uh, but they're going to go with an instep here on Hour of Glory for that 2-2. Uh, that Don't know why they didn't do it on the Knight of Grace there. They should have. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon coming in here and probably killing the history of Benalia immediately. Um, big deal for that. Uh, two cards for them as well. Let's see here. Yep, they're going to go kill that immediately. No problem. We have uh, Knight of Malice on the battlefield getting in for three here. 
And Vrasus Contempt in our hand as well. So we do have spot removal. Just got to hit that fourth land. We can possibly do that. Two cards in opponent's hand. So here's the kind of the, the drawback to the Mono Green Stompy is. They play out their entire hand. And if we have any kind of removal whatsoever, uh, we just deal with their entire board state. So we go his, uh, Radiant Destiny here. And then attack in for four. Uh, since we're really not afraid of anything on their side of the field. Actually, we don't attack in. We don't attack in. Sorry. We're afraid of a, uh, a pump there. A double pump. Sky Sovereign being able to come in killing the uh, Knight of Malice here. Um, so... Unclaimed territory there. We're just going to hold up either a Sell the Wreckage or Vras's Contempt uh, for that Sky Sovereign since um, the uh, Ronas can't attack here. Pumping up the uh, Lanor Elf here to make sure it can crew the Sky Sovereign and uh, go for attack for double. And <laughs> we just go Sell the Wreckage here and feel super bad about that. We do lose our Knight of Grace after the effect is happening here. Um, but opponent, <laughs> yeah, did not rec recognize we had Settled Wreckage open there. And we had five mana available to us. So if the Settled Wreckage deals with their entire board state, we do lose our Knight here. We need to top deck a nice uh, creature or History of Nalia here. We top deck an Exelon's Binding. We can use that if we want to, but we just kind of opt to go for a Radiant Destiny here and pass the turn. We're both kind of rebuilding our board state, but they hit a Green Belt Rampager with lots of mana on their side of the field, making a 3-4 and getting in for one. Getting into a land here. We're just going to use the Binding on the Rampager, hoping they don't have a Blossoming Defense, but of course they do. Uh, so the Exxon's Binding does nothing. Uh, Blossoming Defense is a card that, of course, will be rotating. So the Shep Oasis on top of the Elf there, getting in for some damage. Not of Grace off the top. We're going to go with that. And uh, Vrasus Contempt, the Rampager, making sure that they don't have another Blossoming Defense in hand. Um, so they've already wasted their Heshep Oasis as well. They top deck into a uh, Steel Leaf Champion. We go with the Knight of Grace off the top. And they both have 5-4 Vigilance, so we just attack in thanks to the Radiant Destinies here, as well as the pump from each other, and uh, just kind of uh, wind the game down this way. Scrap Heap Scrounger, can, or, uh, yeah, Scrap Heap Scrounger cannot block, just a 3-2 attacker. Vrasus Contempt for that, we're going to go with the Vrasus Contempt on the Steel Leaf Champion. And just get in for 10 here, again, they can't block, they can't block with the Lanamore Elf, but they're down to 2 now, they need to top deck something important, and I don't believe they do. That's a good old GG. <laughs> Goodness. That was awesome. All right, let's get into match two here and see what we can do. Really liking the black-white decks list here on the uh, rotation proof list. Three lands. Again, if it's a three lander, we're going to keep it. We can't get the history medallion out just yet, uh, but we do have two white mana thanks to that unclaimed territory for the the, Bernard, the marshal. Minister of Inquiries kind of tells me we're on the uh, Godfrey's Gift strategy. I'm going to go with the Knight of Grace here and try to be as fast as possible against their matchup. I'm going to go Drowned Catacombs past turn and come back to us. We're going to go unclaimed territory, name Knight, and go... Benalish Marshall, we do hit two unclaimed territories. So a turn three Marshall actually does happen. We get in for three here. They uh, pitch Gifted Aetherborn and Fetid Pools into the graveyard with a uh, Champion Wits as well, I believe. And uh, Stitcher Supplier, very, very good for the uh, Godfrey's Gift strategy, passing back to us. We're going to go Radiant Destiny, just continue to press our advantage and press as much damage as we possibly can put in as possible. They go double block here, which is fine. Now, one thing we could have done there was go on Ixalan's Binding, but we really want to hold that for like a Godfrey's Gift or something like that. Uh, so turn uh, four here, going to go with a Chamber of Wits, draw some cards, and pitch stuff into the graveyard. Um, so part of the Conquerors could be used in the middle of this match, but we really want to make sure it has the Ascend trigger. We hit Radiant Destiny again, which is super good, getting in for 10 here, dropping opponent down to 11 after the block here. Um, so just, again, pressing a ton of advantage on top of our opponent. A Secret Squire getting in for 2-3 and making another Secret Squire as well, making another 2-3. And uh, we have Knight of Malice off the top there. And uh, Pride of the Conquerors is something that we could use pretty soon here. Going to go with a double block again. Really just waiting for the opponent to play uh, the Godfrey's Gift. There it is, Gate to the Afterlife. They don't have a second mana, so we have this. We have Ixalan's Binding. Grab that Gate to the Afterlife. And uh, opponent scoops it up immediately. Um, so, Godfrey's Gift is a great strategy, but again, it's kind of a combo piece strategy, so if they don't have all the pieces, or if one of the pieces is Ixalan's Binding, that's basically game. Um, so we bring in, uh, here we go, taking out some stuff, bringing in some stuff, brought in Sentinel Totem, brought in Invoke the Divine as well. Just a lot of good stuff there. Let's get into game two here and see what we can do. Opening hand is three lands with a Sentinel Totem. And a Dauntless Bodyguard with a Knight of Malice. So pretty good keep. Going with a tap land for opponent. Tap again. We're going to play a Dauntless Bodyguard and pass. Second land into a Gifted Aetherborn. Playing out another land here. Going for Knight of Malice. Just to make sure we can block that Gifted Aetherborn without them gaining any kind of lifelink stuff. Um, Champion of Wits from opponent there. Nothing too, too insane. Angel of Invention going into the graveyard there. That's white mana. 
Um, so going History Vidalia and just a uh, passing turn here. Could have gone for an attack there with Knight of Malice, uh, but didn't want to kind of uh, get into a get the day through one situation where we had to double block. Uh, Trophy Mage and Minister of Inquiry is getting in as well. So lots of creatures on their side of the field so far. Gonna go Knight here and play out our Knight of Grace and second Knight of Grace. So gonna go really wide with this game plan here because History Vidalia on turn three, just pumping up like crazy is a massive advantage here. But Kitesail Freebooter grabs our Sentinel Totem off the top. Gate to the Afterlife is a great card off the top as well. Um, just a lot of situations here where we really could have used uh, that um, Sentinel Totem. We go for an attack here because of the History Vidalia pump, uh, but we're kind of uh, shooting ourselves in the foot, honestly, uh, because of the Gate to the Afterlife ability here. So they could give us Kitesail Freebooter back if they want to, as far as with the block, but they're not gonna do that. They're just gonna block all the creatures. Take six, I believe, seven, eight, actually they take 11 here. Lots of damage coming in. Lots of draw and discard stuff as well. They do gain a life, I believe, as well, so Gate to the Afterlife is kind of mitigating some of that damage. But Gate to the Afterlife being sacked here to make a Godfrey's Gift is ultimately the way that they win the match here, so they're going to go for that, I assume, immediately. We are having zero cards in our hand, so Ravenous Super Copper killing that Valiant Knight, making sure that the uh, Double Strike there does not work. Uh, the Valiant Knight Double Strike there would have been the way we won the match there, but they had a Trooper Cobra off the top, so pretty ridiculous. Getting in for four, Vigilance Flying Lifelink. We top deck a land, and we just concede here into game three. <laughs> Once they have uh, the Godfrey's Gift, we really can't do anything about it unless we have Ixalan's Binding in hand. So thinking about bringing in Invoke the Divine there, we definitely want to do that. Taking out some of those Radiant Destinies, and uh, bringing in the Selfless Champion to see if we can... Uh, Make some more blockers as well. Three land opening hand with a Sentinel Totem, Knight of Grace, Binding, and Settle the Wreckage. That's fine with me. Gonna bottom that swamp there. Tap land for opponent. Gonna go for a swamp and play out the Knight of Grace. So this is kind of where the uh, the tap lands for the opponent really do slow them down quite a bit. Knight of Grace for opponent as well. We could trade if we want to, uh, but we're gonna pass turn actually. Kitesail Freebooter is going to take that Invoke the Divine, I assume, or Ixalan's Binding. Lots of good picks for the uh, the Freebooter here. Let's see what they take here. Would love it for them to take the Invoke the Divine, so if we top deck a land, we can go with a Binding here. They do take an Ixalan's Binding instead. Knight of Malice off the top, and uh, we just pass turn here. Six cards in hand for opponent, laying their fourth land. Going to go for Ravenous Chupacabra, killing that Knight of Malice. They really can't get in for uh, damage except for the Freebooter, so... One in the air, dropping me down to 19. Unclaimed territory here. We're going to go with Ixalan's Binding on top of that Kitesail Freebooter to make sure we get our second Ixalan's Binding back. Now that can be used to grab Ravenous Chupacabra, Knight of Malice, stuff like that. Uh, Gifted Aetherborn coming in and another Gifted Aetherborn coming in. Lots of good stuff for opponent. They're passing turn on the attack. We're going to lay a land and uh, either use the Binding on the Chupacabra maybe or the Aetherborn. Yep, Chupacabra there and a pass turn. Because the Knight of Grace is a great like blocker against their board state right now, we're just kind of saying, you know, you can do some damage to me, but that's fine. You're going to lose a creature if you do that. Benalus Marshall off the top for us as well. Making a 4-3. Three. three cards in the opponent's hand here. They're kind of looking for a removal spell, probably another Chupacabra, but we, they can't cast it thanks to the Binding. Sentinel Totem there off the top. We're going to scry and put them in the Marshall back on the top as well to make sure we have another pump spell uh, for Knight of Grace. Just a lot of good stuff here. Nothing in their graveyard just yet, and it's turn eight. So their Godfrey's gift strategy isn't doing too much. The Benalus Marshall, ben, uh, ben Marshall hits the battlefield. Benalus <laughs> ben Marshall hits the battlefield. Pass the turn to them again. They lay a land pass. We're going to go with the land here. And uh, we could attack in with our four fours and five fours, um, but we don't really want to because of the death touch creatures with the Gift of Aetherborn. So we do think about it, though. We do decide to go for ultimately an attack in here. Lose both of the marshals and have a 3-2 attacking in. Godfrey's gift off the top there. Before even combat happens, we go invoke the divine, getting rid of it. Passing turn back to them. Again, using the marshals there just to uh, get the gift of Aetherborns out of the way. History Banalia off the top there. Just a fantastic card to rebuild our board state. Getting in for three once again. We don't have enough mana for the settle the wreckage necessarily, but next uh, next uh, turn we can if we need it. Sentinel Totems as well are in place to uh, shut down the graveyard, so if they do hit another Godfrey's Gift or something like that, we definitely have a way to deal with it. 
They go with a block here uh, with the Knight of Malice and the Knight of Grace, so they do trade. Gifted Aetherborn off the top for opponent, I assume. And uh, going with a pass, I think. They have one, two, three creatures in the graveyard, though. Gate to the Afterlife is what's coming into the battlefield as well. Pump on the History Banalia. No problem. We're just going to get in for some damage here. They're going to block, of course. We're only going to deal two points of damage thanks to that life gain there. Uh, but we're going to Sentinel Totem immediately once the uh, Gate to the Afterlife ability happens. They, they hit a Kaito Freebooter into the graveyard, so... Not too bad. Gonna go with Ipni Rivulay, throwing some more stuff into the graveyard. Hitting uh, one, two, three creatures, four creatures. Almost enough for a Gate to the Afterlife once again. Second Gate to the Afterlife hitting the battlefield. Two cards at hand. And uh, R2-2 Vigilant Knight is getting a nice pump here with Valiant Knight coming in on the top. Attacking in for three. Not bad. If we had one more mana, we would have given it Double Strike. Aether Hub off the top for opponent. Two cards in hand. They could go with another Ipni Rivula here, trying to build their graveyard to make sure they can go with a Godfro's Gift. But again, Sentinel Totem is another great way to shut down their graveyard. So, we kind of have the good countermeasure on the battlefield. Hitting Isolated Chapel. And uh, thinking about the Double Strike ability here, we do go for it. Since we do have enough mana for a Settle of Wreckage as well. And uh, they go for a, let's see, Ipni Rivula. Tossing stuff into the graveyard here. Angel of Invention in the graveyard as well there so they have five creatures in the graveyard but opponent actually scoops it up and that is going to be it for match two uh, let's get into match three here and see what we can do i believe this is just a really quick 2-0 for us um i was really confused on what the, the opponent was playing here i feel like there's a weird like um land-based strategy getting into the bodyguard on turn two here um would have loved a turn three play but got a uh, unclaimed territory into a banalish marshal so not bad. Not bad at all. Getting in for three here. Meta Wind Grace might be a possible play if we hit a fourth land. Another land play. Going to go Field of Ruin on our Unclaimed Territory. We're going to grab a Swamp and hit a Plains. And Knight of Wind Grace is coming on in. Probably should have grabbed a Plains there instead of a, a Swamp. But really wanted to uh, kind of prioritize the Vras's Contempt over the Banalish Marshal. Just in case of a large play. Um, Waker of the Winds is what hits on their side of the field. We hit Banalish Marshal here. And uh, continue to build out our board state. Getting close to uh, Pride of the Conquerors being able to have an Ascend attack here. Getting in for five Vigilance. Hitting it down to four for their opponent. Or for our opponent. And that's probably going to do it there. Yep, that's it. Let's get into uh, game two. And taking out the uh, Selfless Champion. Bringing in Seal of Ways. And uh, taking out some Stud of the Wreckage. Bringing in some Plague Mares. And uh, just hitting okay. Again, I'm not really sure what kind of deck list we were playing in this particular game, but uh, I just know we just completely demolished them. <laughs> they really don't have a way to respond uh, quickly enough. Uh, because Black White Knights, if you're not prepared for it and you don't have enough removal for it, uh, it's really difficult to bounce back. Four lands opening hand. Knight of Grace and Knight of Wind Grace with Valiant Knight. Lots of good stuff. We go with the keep here. Probably would have been better to have something else besides that swamp. Get an unclaimed territory. Uh, so no turn one play. Kind of sad there, but... Two mana for opponent, nothing on their side. So we go for an isolated chapel here and then go into Knight of Grace. Um, so trying to be aggressive. Turn three, Radiant Destiny hit another land. See, while we're hitting lands, I'm really not that upset about it thanks to us having the four drops in our hand here. Four lands here going for a World Shaper on their side. Uh, we're going to play Valiant Knight and make a 4-4 and just get in for four. All the pump on the side of the field just gives it a ton of advantage. Gives us a ton of advantage. They go with the Mending here. So this is some weird, like, land situation. Not really worried about it at all, really. Gonna go with either Unclaimed Territory or Swamp into Knight of Wind Grace or Knight of Malice. Uh, so Knight of Wind Grace off the top there, and just getting in uh, for nine points of damage on turn five. Again, just super powerful in standard right now, especially because this is rotation proof. They all, they all really synergize really well with each other. Down to four for opponent. They really need something, uh, but I don't think they're going to find it. <laughs> Multani is in their graveyard there, so that could be something they can do. Waker of the uh, Wilds there, and uh, that's probably not going to do it for them. They could block there, and that's going to be it. All right, guys, that is the match. Just hope you did like it. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the notification bell to notify you when we have a video going live on the channel right here on YouTube. And if you want to catch me, I usually stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, I'll put that link usually right in the comments pinned first there. If you have a suggestion for a deck tech you want me to cover, please leave it in the comments down below. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.
Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.